it's a moment we've all been waiting for. Our Carb Cobra Jet Cody is sitting on the engine stand over here at West Tech. Before we get started with the power numbers, we're gonna go back over LNR and finish up the long block. Our 2011 Mustang motor had about 50,000 miles on it when we pulled it out, so we want to get some new parts from Ford because of the RPM that we're turning. And down here you can see some of these parts. We have brand new primary chains and secondary chains. New tensioners that go on top of the cylinder heads, and also our primary tensioners are Boss 302 tensioners. They hold pressure a little better. Also we're putting all brand new rockers on here, and with that you can see that we've taken the clip that holds the rocker onto the lifter out. The actual rocker is held in place by the cam. These clips have been known to fail at high RPM, so we're just gonna remove them completely. So here we have our Kometic Custom Thickness Head Gaskets. They're about 11,000 thicker than stock compressed. It's gonna give us about a 1200, 1202 to one compression ratio, so it's not too crazy, versus like the stock gasket was gonna be like 12.3, 12.4 to one. On the cylinder heads here, you can see fully worked out by Livernoy Motorsports. Intake runners, all CNC, exhaust runners the same. Pick up about 30 CFM on the intake and about 35 CFM on the exhaust at 500 lift. On the inside of the motor, you can see the comp cams valve spring and their lightweight titanium retainer. Connected to all this is stainless steel valves by Freya, a 1500 on the intake and a 1262 on the exhaust. the cams installed now we're getting ready to degree them. With our cams we have comp cams Cobra Jet grind of camshafts that have been custom spec. We have 240 degrees of duration on the intake at 50, 246 on the exhaust, 512 lift with 128 degree lobe separation. runs with the carbon Coyote motor. We're making right around the mid 560 range. Um, with these cams, they're degree, they're locked in place. There's no VCT here. We can't move them on the computer. So we're actually gonna change the intake center line of the cam. Currently it's at 109 degrees. We're gonna advance it to 105 degrees and see what that does. Uh, Comp is suggesting playing with the intake side before moving to the exhaust side. So that's what we're doing. Now, what's nice about these lockouts is that there are little hash marks on the top of the lockout and we've got a little line on there. So each hash mark on the lockout plate is good for two degrees of cam timing. So we're gonna move it over two hash marks, advanced, and then we're gonna button it all back together. Really easy to make the changes once you have the cams degreed on the Coyotes, but now that we can make changes on the fly really easily just by taking the valve cover off and loosening a couple perimeter bolts and making that adjustment around the cam. When you carburetor a motor, obviously you're going away from the factory electronics and making it really easy to keep all the coil and plug stuff running just like it did from the factory is Fast XIM Box. Now they make the XIM Box for a wide range of applications, but they also make them for all the mod motors from 4.6 to 5.4s and even the new Coyote. You can set base timing, you can set at the all in timing and your max timing. So really we haven't even had to open up a laptop with this. We've been making our timing changes on the fly. So very mechanical, kind of like an old vacuum event distributor, but all electronically. So we just got done playing around with some intake cam center lines. We started with the advancing at four degrees, and as you can see, it picked up a, a lot of bottom end power, but then it suffered on the top end when compared to the four retard from the 109 center line that we started at where it picked up more peak but suffered pretty big on the bottom end here. The worst average horsepower and torque was with the retarded setting. Um, the advanced was in second place for the next worst and the best was with the original intake center line of 109 degrees. We're actually gonna run in about 110 degrees because um, the motor ran a little bit cleaner with the little better bottom end power. So we're gonna sacrifice a little bit of top end power, but we're gonna get a little bit better signal to the motor um, and it'll run a little bit cleaner with that 110 setting. So now what we're gonna do is go back to the motor, change the intake steering lane back to 110, 
and then go to the exhaust side and now try to play with the advanced and retard function of that. Well, we're done here at West Tech. We got a little bit over a day's worth of dyno time into this motor. We've really adjusted everything from intake cams, exhaust cams, retarding, advancing them, ignition timing, fueling in the carburetor, different carburetors. So we've really used a lot of testing time. Overall, like I say, it didn't come easy, but there was a learning curve. And there's none of these tests that I walk in looking for something and walk away with the answer. It seems like I always walk away with 10 more questions, and I've already got things that I'd like to change and check and test on this thing and compare some other pieces to really kind of optimize the package. I think there's a little more left in it. But that's uh, left for another day for Mark and I and a little more fun. We're pretty happy with how everything went here at West Tech. 590 horsepower, we're up over 173 horsepower from a factory Coyote with the use of only about another 10 cubic inches. And for all you naysayers that think a carburetor can't make power on a Coyote, we just have proven it can.